Hello everyone, I'm Rachel, a Radical Soul Untangled. So it's time for another one of our Cycle Maker spreads. And this is where I get a card, usually from an Oracle deck, to highlight an energy we need to start bringing into our lives and shifting our focus towards, rather than what most people think of as find the problem, think of a problem, and try to figure out ways to solve it. Um, I'm trying to get us, my goal for this channel is to get people to F learn to shift their focus towards more positive things, towards light, rather than uh, seeing only their problems and how they need to fix them and how to get answers to fix that, because that really ends up feeding the problem. The energy of problem solving is different from the energy of spotting the problem in the first place. And so I'm trying to help get us to that mindset where we can let the solution start to flow into our lives rather than be focused so much on the problem that we actually end up blocking out potential solutions. I hope that makes sense. So anyways, I'm using two tarot or I'm using two decks. I'm using the Light Seer's Tarot and the Creator the Sacred Creator's Oracle. Both are by Chris Ann and I just love these decks. I love how well they work together as also. Um so I'll just go ahead and get started with that. So we have uh, this. Your past supports your future. And this is card 11. Now the first 22 cards, what's really clever about that sacred uh, creator's oracle, is that the first 22 cards are basically the major arcana if you took each card and crystallized it into a uh, specific meaning. And uh, I like that because <laughs> you know when you when you get if I were to just use the from this deck and just put out justice well it, uh, it gives me a lot of ways to interpret it which I like that flexibility but sometimes it's kind of nice to have something more specific here um, and so this says your past supports your future and to me what that means is that we very often get stuck in rumination which is where you just look at your past and you see nothing but things that you regret. Um, mistakes you've made, missed opportunities, wrong choices, all of these I'm saying with air quotes. Um, because all of those things were actually important for you to experience on your path. And they weren't something that an external deity roadblocks that they put in your path to test you to see what you would do this is some of the stuff is stuff that your soul selected for you to experience because maybe in your previous life this is what you got tripped up on last time and they're going you know if I could just get past that there's so much more I could expand and learn and grow into in this lifetime so that's basically how to start viewing your problems your challenges your, your failures, your shortcomings, all these things that you've been putting yourself down over for years and telling yourself, well, I've just not been dealt the right cards. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, I just had bad luck. I just wasn't born into the right family. I just wasn't born into the right circumstance. All of the problems that you've had to face are to help expand who you are and who you are becoming now. So less ruminating, less beating yourself up, more of this deeper understanding that your past supports your future. Even if you've had, even if you've gone bankrupt, even if you've uh, been divorced, even if you've lost somebody very close to you, um, you know, either, you know, in any number of ways, even if you feel like everything you touch falls apart, it's all to support you. There are lessons there that you can choose to learn or you can choose to continue running from, continue hiding from, continue denying. Um, yeah, it's all literally is all that you make of it. And it's very important that we understand that the good, and there's plenty of good in your past too. We tend to overfocus on the negative because, and that kind of feeds us in a victim mentality um, and keeps us sabotaging ourselves because then we start living in fear. 
So we have to also remember the good parts in our future too, all the bright things that have happened, all the wonderful people we've met, regardless of if they're still in our lives or not. But there have been, there is far more good in your past that than negative things. There is far more memories that are joyful and worth uh, reliving to celebrate those happy moments and remind you as like a reservoir of well-being to support you in times in your present where you maybe forget that you're doing so well, when you're feeling very challenged, when you're feeling like you're struggling, when you're overwhelmed, you can tap into those happy memories to help sustain you. But instead, what we tend to do is focus on the unpleasant memories, the supposed mistakes, the mis supposed missed opportunities, and blaming ourselves or others for that. So your past supports your future. You would not be who you are now if you didn't go through what you've gone through. And so this came out first and I just thought that was perfect. The seven of cups, the seven of cups is all about choices, but it's kind of the illusion of choice. See, he's engaged in his mind. He's trying to figure he's thinking of, well, oh, I want to make the right choice. I want to be, I want to turn over the right cup that has the queen under it. You know, um, I don't want to turn over the one with the snake. I don't want to turn over the one with the, you know, bat. I don't, um, oh, I guess this is a reference to shoots and ladders, you know, um, climbing up one minute and then you're sliding down the next. Um, I don't want to pick a, a cup that's leaky. I want to pick the exact perfect right cup. And, uh, and I think that might be like a little skull there in that one. I'm not sure I don't know if there's a holes or if that's a skull right there. What do you think? Anyway, um, so he's engaged in his mind a little too much. So even though this is a, a water suit, which is emotion, uh, you see behind him a big blue sky and you see the expression on his face. There's also a lot of air energy in this seven of cups. Also a lot of clouds. When I see clouds in a card, I tend to see that as um, obfuscation, confusion, a lack of clarity. Um, and usually when you have a lack of clarity, it's because you're spending way too much time in your head rationalizing, negotiating, weighing your options, which one is more, you're, you're spending so much time trying to be rational and come to the most logical conclusion that you're not listening to your heart. You're afraid that your heart is going to make you look foolish. You're afraid that listening to your heart will, um, yeah, is, is the foolish thing to do is, is going to make you look dumb, is going to make you look, uh, ignorant or naive it's going to make you a victim you don't listen to your heart because you think your heart is what made you a victim and it wasn't your heart that has ever made you a victim it was your head <laughs> uh the whole time that kept you in uh, a victim mindset because you're so busy weighing all these options and seeing them as potentially equal uh that your heart is what weighs the quality, the real quality of things. And so when you don't have, when you're disengaged from your heart or you keep your heart kind of walled off to protect you and you're like, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to think of this rationally. I'm just going to read all the studies and figure out which is the best and do pros and cons sheets for each of these options. Um, that actually feeds the confusion. That actually increases your likelihood of making the wrong choice for you or listening to what others have to say, getting everybody's advice and feedback, taking polls, you know, informal polls among your friends. Like, well, what would you pick? What would you decide? You know? So, yeah, the Seven of Cups is actually to remind you that listen to your heart, disengage from your mind so much, and you'll have less confusion about making the right choice. Because even if you make something that seems like the wrong choice at that time, uh, it will serve that part that will become part of your past that will serve your future. If you treat it the right way, if you don't get stuck in your victim mentality, if you don't get stuck in your um, sabot saboteur mentality, if you don't get stuck in self-sabotage, 
because you're in such a, a, a victimized mindset. You're like, well, I, I, sh I knew it. I always choose the assholes. I always end up dating assholes or I can never make a good decision about my job or I can never make a good decision about where to live or anything like that. You've got to, that's all a victim mindset where you're basically saying, I can't trust myself. I'm not worthy to be trusted. I can trust almost anybody else except for me. And then when you do that, and that person inevitably is going to disappoint you because they don't know what's best for you, like your soul does, like your heart does. Then you're going to say, see, that's what happens when I choose. But you're still externalizing your power. So don't do that. <laughs> get out of your head. This is saying get out of your head, drop into your heart. And know that if you make a mistake and it seems like the wrong mistake you can make that the right choice. You can say, this was a lesson that I needed to learn from. This is a challenge I needed to overcome. And while it seemed like at the time I was bested by that, I know now how to overcome that challenge in the future. That's how you empower yourself with it. Uh, we also have the hermit in reverse. And the hermit is, as I said before, about a sense of isolation or withdrawal, but with the intent of reflecting on things, integrating um, your observations, uh, taking the time out to uh, not just heal, more like to draw upon your past experiences and see the interconnections between everything. But in the reverse, a hermit means... That's when you withdraw. That's when you actually try to disengage from the world and to, to soothe yourself. So this is the binge watching Netflix, you know, for an entire weekend. This is the um, coming straight home from work and just watching YouTube or playing video games, uh, which you might think, well, that's not really withdrawing, but you're, you're withdrawing from your other responsibilities, your other relationships in life, and you're escaping them. This is an escapist energy. And this is also when we, sometimes when we try to do this escapist energy, it's because we're running from painful memories in our past and it's keeping us stuck. So we are in this escapist energy because we're afraid to go into our future because we have so many painful memories about our past. So this is saying that we need to, you know, get into a more the upright hermit. So see how she's just kind of, she's just floating there and she's just peacefully looking out over the sea and you know, no, traditionally, the hermit is shown holding a lantern. Her soul is the lantern. Her heart is the lantern. There's the lantern down there, but she's not using that external light source to guide her. She's looking at the light within. And when you, so when you have that in reverse, you're not looking, you're not shining that light within and shining it out to the world. Um, you're... Again, you're hiding. This is a hiding and escapist kind of energy. Hermit in reverse. The hangman is, in a way, it can be kind of similar uh, to hermit in that this is, again, another energy of pause and reflection, but from a new perspective. So think of it when you're hanging upside down, the blood rushes to your head and you start, you're, you're disengaging your rational mind as much like here so this is usually a card to kind of like reflect and pause stop what you're doing and reflect look within and uh also just kind of look for guidance so and there's a lot of green in this card i love how much green is in this card so that means this is a very heart energy this is where you you're hanging upside down, all this blood is rushing to your head, overwhelming your thinking so that you're kind of forced to listen with your heart. You know, um, I remember as a kid just hanging with my head upside down off the edge of the couch or something and that 
fun, silly, lightheaded kind of feeling you get. That's what the um, hanged man is kind of asking you to do, to take a pause and disengage from your thinking. So there's the hermit is can be very cerebral still. It's a lot of thinking, well, and here's how this connects and this how this connects. This is just more like, oh, I see it now. Um, because you're, but you're seeing it with your heart rather than with your mind. And you can do this very gracefully. <laughs> um, you can choose to do this. Sometimes you're kind of forced to do this by your circumstances. Uh, like maybe, I don't know, a global pandemic that makes us have to social distance and self-isolate. Um, so it's kind of forced us in that the hermit and the hanged man's energy are very much supported by the pandemic. Go figure. And we have the king of wands. So I take this to be like, this is the energy that we want to really get to. This is if... If we support this energy, you know, if we if we start to really integrate this into our thinking of how our past, your past supports your future, and you stop focusing so much on making the right choice or not, and you stop this escapist energy, you start, you know, I don't say disengaging your brain, but yeah, in a way, you kind of want to disengage your brain. And listen with your heart instead. Really listen to your heart. And then this is how we kind of summon the King of Wands within us. And this King of Wands, uh, and see, his wand is green. So again, heart-focused. He is a very heart-focused energy. Um, he's also wearing red. So he's kind of rooted in his sacral, or his um, root chakra. And so he has a very confident sense of like, you know, feeling secure in who he is. There's also a lot of yellow here. So again, that's that solar plexus, I am kind of energy. And uh, let's see, he's got, uh, initially I thought lizard and I'm like, oh no, that's a salamander. That's clever. And it uh, looks like he's got like little dragons tattooed on him and such. Um, I just, I just love the little details. He's got some prayer beads showing that. He's a man of action, but he's kind of spiritually focused still. He's um, he's not acting blindly. He's acting with his heart in, and uh, in a spiritual sense. And he's got his lion behind him. So he's an older guy. You can see he's a little salt and pepper. Still handsome, but, you know, a little more mature. Um because king energy is a high degree of mastery in how you present yourself to the world or how that or how a specific person presents themselves to the world. So this could be represent um, a person in your life or coming into your life. But I take this. This feels more like this is the um, mastery over your own power in creating your own creative power and doing it effectively, doing it so that um, any doubts that arise, you know, you can, you know how to snuff out your own doubts. You're not paralyzed by uh, self-sabotage. And so we have this, we have this lion in the background. I take that lion to mean that he is, uh, he's got his, the claws can come out when they need to come out, basically. Is that if if you're not in his way, he he's got this this energy about him, this magnetism, that if you're not in his way, then everything is good. But if something is in his way, and he needs to fight for it, and those claws will come out, and that powerful animal will spring forward when necessary. But he does. But he has the line hanging back, so not at his not in front of him. Because that would kind of imply that um, that's somebody who's very aggressive, right? They have their animal in front of them. They want to intimidate you because they believe that's how they show power. And he doesn't have his lion necessarily beside him. Because that kind of shows that maybe a more Jekyll and Hyde kind of energy. Where in the, maybe while it seems like it would be... A show of power, and I mean, it's definitely better than having your line in front of you, uh, ready to pick a fight. 
you know, um, having it beside you is a little better, but there's still a little bit of, that's, the lion could easily come out when you're triggered, you know. So this is saying that the lion at such a distance behind him, to me that says that he has absolute mastery over his animal protective nature to the point where he doesn't need to have it at his, he knows it's back there. He can call it forward when he has to, but he's going to think long and hard. He's still, <laughs> I know I've been saying, don't use your head so much. Don't use your head so much, but this is a more cool, detached kind of thinking. This isn't somebody who's a slave to their thoughts and a slave to their indecision. This is somebody who takes clear, decisive action and leads by the clarity of his own example. And so when he's like, all right, I've exhausted every option within my experience. It's time for the lion to come out. And the lion comes out. I hope that makes sense. And so these cards uh, <laughs> support these really well. So we have, um, so with that seven of cups, when you're in a situation that is hard to, for you to discern, mentally where you feel as if you know there's so many options how do i know to make the right option what does your soul say that's the question to ask yourself what does your soul say quiet your mind quiet the thinking don't look so much at well this option is good but then this option has these benefits and really if i do this I'll, you know stop that <laughs> take some deep breaths and anytime your mind starts to do that kind of chatter, just go, Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> just go hush, okay, all right, no, I hear you, I hear you, it's time to be quiet now, and let your soul speak to you, because there are times where you see a bunch of red flags, but you go for it anyway, but your the red flags are what your soul sees, it's really not what your head sees sometimes. A lot of times when you see a red flag, but you rationalize out of it, it's that your soul is going, I don't know, do you think we need to still learn this lesson? Okay, I guess we still need to learn this lesson. Um, but again, it's not even necessarily red flags about, oh, here's what you shouldn't do. This is also green flags. This is going, yeah, go with that. And you might go, well, that doesn't seem very reasonable. That doesn't seem very rational. That doesn't seem the most pragmatic. That might be a little too much for me. That might be a little too much to hope for, to dream for. And your soul's going, but that's what we need. That's what we want. That's what we need to do. And you say, oh, I know, but that would require that I do. That's what we want. So listen to your soul, because your soul is not so much going to tell you, no, no, no. Your soul is is actually always saying yes. It's saying yes or I guess. <laughs> I guess if you want to do that, that's fine. But your soul is mostly telling you yes and just to different degrees of intensity. So, yeah. Your brain is telling you no, no, no. Or, mm, sure, or that could kind of work. When you listen to your heart, when you listen to your soul you get, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, I like that, oh, yeah, that, 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 <laughs> or it goes, I guess, okay, if that's what you think we need to do, we'll do it, so uh, <laughs> I hope that makes sense, your soul isn't really going to go, no, but it's not going to be on fire, listen for the things that light your soul on fire, and so the hermit in reverse energy, we can get out of that by focusing on the now, being present in the situation, not trying to escape our past, not trying to escape the present, but focusing on the now, meaning the present moment. This is a call to mindfulness. Um, and sometimes there's a little alarm clock here with an eye, but... This could also mean maybe you need to set a little chime on your phone every now and then to remind you to practice. If you're just starting out on this, practice 30 seconds of mindfulness. It's a little hard at first because you literally have to kind of narrate. If you're very new to this, you literally have to kind of narrate what you're experiencing in this moment. Like now I am taking a deep breath. Now I'm releasing the deep breath. 
Now I'm hearing birds. Now I'm listening to the rain. Now I hear my cat meowing in the background. Now I hear, you know, uh, dogs barking across the street, you know, but eventually you won't have to do that so much. It's tedious at first. And that's why you might want to start it at very short intervals. Uh, if you are not familiar with mindfulness practices, um, but it will get better with experience, you know, or eat, eating mindfully. I'm taking a bite of this delicious, of this meal. I'm tasting it. I taste these flavors. I am experiencing pleasure at tasting these flavors. Um, you can do that. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more grounded you are in the now, the less need you feel to escape from your past and escape from your future or uh, hide from your future. Because you are now, you're accepting the present. And so you're not living between, a lot of this um, hermit in reverse energy is the exhaustion we feel from constantly oscillating between the past, present, past, present, past, or and future, past and future, past and future, past and future. We're kind of like, we're we, we're kind of, our thinking is often between these two poles, past, future, past, future, past, future. And we're only in the now for the brief moments that we're running back and forth. You know, so we're constantly going, this is happening now, which means in my past, it's a lot like this thing that happened in my past. And that's happened. And what happened was this. And that's probably what's going to happen in the future. So I don't want that to happen in the future, but that's probably what's going to happen. In the future. So that's why you feel exhausted and you want to escape. And you can, the, the only real escape is by learning mindfulness, if you have it. And there's tons of practices, tons of meditations, but you don't have to do a, a half hour meditation on it right out the gate. Or even like, like I said, not even a 10 or minute meditation, if that's too much for you. 30 seconds, a, a, a chime on your phone every now and then for 30 seconds that can remind you of that. Could be helpful. Again, if you haven't started mindfulness training yet. Um, and for the hanged man, when you're hanging there, reflect on what you really want. What do I really want? What do I really want in life? What do I really want for my future? What What do I want What from my past? What have I learned? What did I think I wanted in my past that has fallen away? And I realized that wasn't the right choice for me. And what do I think I want now? What do I want now? And listen again, listen to your heart. Hang, the hanged man is this disengaging of, you know, the, wor the worry and the mental chatter. And just really reflecting and listening to your heart, which is connected to the divine, your internal divine and the divine, you know, beyond yourself. So, yeah, a lot of times we're just doing things because we think this is what will bring us success. We think that this is the plan that will get us where we're supposed to be. And we think of where we're supposed to be based on what we've observed in others or what others have told us about themselves. So, um, but we rarely actually, you know, started down a path because that's what we actually want to do in our lives. We're doing, we're trying to follow the plan. We're trying to create the plan and we're trying to live according to uh, the laws and the, uh, and the influences of the current systems that we have. And we're finding out that that's working for fewer and fewer and fewer people. And people are actively rejecting that. And that's why now we are all being called to reflect, look in our heart and reflect about things that we really want in our lives. And also another thing is that we focus too much on what we don't want. Don't want any more poverty. I don't want any more worry. I don't want, you know, any more conflict. I don't want any strife. I I, I don't want this. I don't want that. I, you know, I, I, we don't focus on what we actually want to bring in. And again, that's part of why I do these um, cycle maker spreads is that we focus so that we focus on what we actually do want for ourselves, do want for our world and our futures and 
instead of just saying, well, I don't want to be like this anymore. Well, how do you want to be like then? That's where we're sometimes that's where we need to stop and reflect and look within. Because sometimes we're like, well, I don't want this and I don't want this and I don't want to be this way anymore and I don't want to feel this way anymore. Okay, well, then how do you want to feel? Uh, and then you want to stay happy and then you're like, that seems like a tall order, right? <laughs> or like, so focus on things in a more positive uh, framing. And I by again, by positive, I don't just mean everything's happy and wonderful and 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 nothing bad can happen or nothing bad should happen. This is, this means more positive in what do I want rather than focusing on what I don't want. And the King of Wands, uh, this is just a reminder that you are epic. Oh, it's the Emperor. <laughs> this is number four. So um, like I said at the beginning, this deck, this Oracle deck uses the first 22 cards, uh, but it starts, that's why it starts with two uh, z double zeros because the first card's like the fool. So the first 22 cards, um, number 00 to 21, are the major arcana. And so this is the emperor. You are epic. And this is, card is just all yellow. Um, so this is, you know, solid, I know who I am, very masculine energy again not masculine as in male but just energy of the this is what i want this is my vision this is how you know we're we're gonna get about to it um and so we have like these uh so it's very reminiscent of the sun as well because the sun is actually seen as masculine energy as well because it is um it is a pure ball of energy. It gives forth light. It gives forth warmth and heat. It, you know, solar power, um, this kinetic energy. It puts out kinetic energy rather than potential energy, which is more of the realm of the feminine, bodily energy, potential energy, it, darkness, void. That's why the moon is associated, you know, a reflective light rather than a kinetic powered light so yeah so and in a way kind of see king of wands as like is, is all the kings are basically aspects like the four aspects of the um emperor card so uh yeah so this is just to kind of remind you of your power to remind yourself and not in like an empty way not just to go eh, i guess i'm kind of epic but to really I, it's hard to say. I, it's hard to give tips on, you know, other than affirmations, you know, if, if you haven't, if you're still new to these kinds of things, you know, start with some affirmations and repeat them several times a day. But eventually you're going to have to kind of, you're, you're, that shadow part of you is still going to be lingering in the background going, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. And eventually you're going to have to hear it and confront it not just by going shut up shut up shut up shut up i don't want to listen to you but eventually just going no we're done we're done we don't need to listen to you you haven't done us any good you're not keeping us safe you're not keeping us genuinely humble you're only hurting us please be quiet <laughs> so um but yeah that you are epic. There's, it takes time. It takes some time. It takes some really getting your, I don't say head wrapped around it. Really, <laughs> um, actually letting go of a lot of programming. It's it's more about letting go of concepts of false modesty, of false um, humility. I was gonna say humbleness. Um, you know, where you think, oh, I can't brag about myself. I can't talk about how wonderful I am or how powerful I am. So I have to do, I have to do the opposite because I don't like it when hearing people talk about their power, but there's a difference between being vain and conceited and talking about your power from your shadow and breaking yourself up when you don't have anything to back it up. And then having such a deep sense of 
knowing who you are at your core that you just are saying this with confidence. No, I'm epic. I'm epic. And all of you have the potential to be epic. <laughs> you all can be epic. I know the difference is, is I know I'm epic. You guys have all just forgotten. But I think that's the main difference. You're not just saying, I'm the best. I'm the best because I'm the best. I'm the best because I'm the best. You're saying, you're, this is an epic that is, uh, it's connected to your power. It's knowing that you have power, that it, your power comes from within you and is not something granted to you from external influences. And once you've really integrated that notion that you're epic, it's, o- it's okay <laughs> to be confident. Because that's where real confidence lies, not in bragging, but in, uh, in really deeply understanding where your power lies. So... Anyway, that's a cycle we should work on bringing in. <laughs> Looking at your past in a way that it supports your future, the future that you want to go towards, the future that you aspire to have, the future that you know is meant for you, but you might not know how to get there. And you might be looking so much at your regrets, but focus less on your regrets. Focus on your p- past successes. Focus on your friendships. Focus on everything that has in your life that you value now has come from your past. Ah, think of it that way. Everything in your life that you value right now, that you love, has come from your past in some way, shape, or form at some time or another. Um, and reflect on how certain struggles that you had or certain even character flaws that you used to have have helped you Um, tear down old paradigms of who you were and rebuild new ones you know don't get so bogged down in your head that you think of choices use your use your soul to help you make choices don't get caught up in escapism to avoid reflection focus on being in the now instead take the time and the energy to pause withdraw yourself from a situation because even when you feel triggered ah the hangman is also like when you feel triggered and instead of reacting right away knee-jerk reaction especially to something like a text where it doesn't necessarily demand that you respond right away um take the time to pause and reflect and listen to your heart let that urge subside and those urges to get back at them or to one-up them or to teach them a lesson or all those things because is that what you really want (laughs) is that is that what you really want is to like win the fight or do you want peace do you want real peace just an example (laughs) and uh and your king of wands uh, you know listens with his heart keeps his beast at his back Alert and ready to be called forward when necessary, but focused spiritually and again, listening to his heart, knowing who he is with his, in. it's all because of his experience. That's also part of why he's older looking. He's somebody who's had a lot of experiences in his life and those have informed him to be the powerful figure he is now. And so now he doesn't have to brag about how great he is. He just knows he's epic. So this isn't you going around saying, I'm epic, I'm epic, I'm epic. This is you just knowing it and owning it to such a degree that people just respect you. You know, because now you finally respect yourself. So anyway, there we are. (laughs) I think I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you so much for listening. And I really appreciate the time and uh, attention you get this. My name is Rachel, a radical soul entangled. Thank you so much. Have a great day.